Good morning and welcome to the JMP Saves Cars YouTube channel. If you're watching this video, it's because you clicked on the thumbnail. And if you clicked on the thumbnail, you're interested in GMT 800 trucks. Well, this is my most recent acquisition. I uh, found this truck, went down, bought it basically sight unseen because it's a uh, you know, Duramax diesel, six speed manual transmission, four wheel drive, and it appeared to be in pretty good shape. So I drove it for the past three weeks and basically have figured out, you know, all the problems that the truck has. And it's a, it's a staggering amount of issues. So what this video is about today is how functional and how dependable is, you know, a classic GMT 800 with 175,000 miles and basically unknown history because this truck, it's got a colorful history. I mean, the number of zip ties holding the bumper and the front end on it is just staggering. I haven't found any bolts. The uh, front end was definitely lined up by uh, Ray Charles because I can just about get my hand in that gap. The rocker panels were professionally done by a uh, an artist. Oh yeah, it's got brand new rockers. Let me just uh, take a look under there for you. See what I see? <laughs> what is that? Oh my God. What is that? <clears throat> oh, there's the parking brake cable. Frame's got some fresh paint over old rust. So what we're talking about here is uh, the current issues. When I was driving the, the truck home, let me zoom out a little bit here. When I was driving the truck home, I was smelling brakes, it was shaking, and it would kind of come and go. And that's because the brake lines had been replaced and they heated up the uh, brake hoses. So the brake hose kind of, you know, comes and goes. It uh, pinches off the caliper and holds the brake on for you when you don't want it on. It runs well. It's got four uh, codes right now for the MAF, the uh, fuel pressure regulator. It uh, seems to act up here and there. Uh, it'll kind of exhibit a rough idle. Um, the hitch is about to fall off. The U-bolts uh, holding the rear axle are quite rusted. So I figured the best thing that I could do to show, you know, how good these trucks are compared to modern trucks is load it down with uh, a good amount of weight. I'm estimating there's at least a ton in the bed. Like everything that's in here is heavy. That compressor right there probably weighs 500. There's a plow in there, snow blower, rototiller. You know, just this is like a, a, a normal load. This is what you should be able to carry with your three quarter ton truck. So I'm gonna take it down the road and with worn out brakes, warped rotors, springs that need to be addressed it needs a ball joint here and there but the truck just doesn't care it's still going to work and you know as long as you don't drive you know carelessly you can safely operate a truck that needs a bunch of work but if this truck was a 2017 2018 this thing would be strapped to the dealership hooked to the diagnostic machine in limp mode going nowhere so let's go. We're going to the scrapyard to uh, I'll basically throw away everything I'm not gonna not gonna get to or care to. You know, like this snow blower, it ran, it had an issue, it's not worth fixing. The rototiller, I fixed it, I did a bunch of you know rototilling with it, and then I ran it over with a skid steer by accident. That plow that's in there, I had that on my Subaru Forester. These headers. These like big block fender exit headers. 
What am I ever going to do with those? Nothing. So it's all going to go. So uh, let's bring this to the scrapyard. Oh, yeah. It's got this extra storage compartment here. You know, these trucks are dependable in many ways, like typical issues. But you just throw a screw in there, and that's all you need. This might be pulling off of here. What the heck happened there? I don't know. <clears throat> oh, my headliner. She's coming down. Well, enough talk. Let's go. Fire this thing up. Where are my keys? Ugh. Hear that squeak? You're just going to want to pump the... Oh, yep. See? Goes right away. Get that clutch in there. We're running. I mentioned the parking brake doesn't work. Let me just slam the door again. Because what does it need? It needs pins and bushings on the door, just like every one of these. This has uh, the remote power window option, as desirable. Uh-oh, we're going down. All right, let's hit the road. Oh, the cat's been deleted and the muffler, so that's good. Let me just pump the clutch a few more times. This is what I mean. There's something wrong with the clutch, but as long as you start the day right with a, you know, couple dozen pumps, you're all right. That's about all that you can use first gear for. And if you want it to shift from first to second, you've got a 30% chance of being in reverse when you let out the clutch. So we just don't do that really. So in order to get to second, you wanna go almost into reverse, but not quite. Here we go. really doesn't feel like there's any weight in the truck and I know it's a one ton truck not really it's a three quarter ton truck but it doesn't feel like there's anything going on all right and we're gonna cut for pulling out on the road all right so here we are about a 15 mile drive and just like I thought the truck just did the job like it didn't even didn't even have any weight in it at all a little bit of complaints from the brakes you know they feel a little bit weak and i don't blame them because i've looked at the rotors and i'm not sure if there's more than three brake pads left in this truck the suspension you know you could you could feel and hear the noises are a little bit a little bit more um but just goes to show these trucks can be pretty much worn out still go to work and still get the job done 
and be relatively safe to drive. I'm not saying that you should drive trucks that are, you know, technically unsafe. I'm just saying that you can. If you do it wisely and you're careful and you keep a good following, you know, following distance, you're, you're not really asking for it. You're just, you're using, you're getting the most out of your parts here, you know. You can't be buying trucks and then doing all the work to them. You got to do the work with the parts that you bought when you bought the truck so you get the money out of it. I don't know. Makes sense to me. I'm going to bring it across the scales and uh, I'll show you afterwards what this weighed. Oh, there you have it. 2060 uh, was the gross in the bed. So, goes to show you, old truck that needs quite a bit of quite a bit of work is still capable of hauling over what it was originally rated for. Keep them going, boys. <laughs>